All right, let's talk about turbochargers. One of my favorite things in the world, really. Um, I wanted to discuss how we ended up picking this 106 millimeter G57 3000 Garrett turbocharger uh, for our half mile car, which is a five liter 2013 Mustang, if you're not familiar with its Coyote power plant. Uh, based on what we had made before on an S400 charger, which was in the 18 to 1900 flywheel mark, uh, and went 207 mile an hour with the charger completely maxed out I and mean, the wastegate was shut basically from half track on. It was all it would make. Um, we needed to work on a few things. Uh, Aero being one of them, obviously. Uh, the other one, just producing more horsepower. I was really sick of running out of turbocharger when trying to turn the car up. And when we looked at turbocharger options, noticed a few things. Uh, all of the, I shouldn't say all because I don't know for sure, most of the Chinese turbocharger options available out there are copies of Garrett's. They use Garrett's turbine wheel designs, their compressor wheel designs, their, their copies of the chargers. So much so as I've even seen them advertised as the same designation, like a G trim or a G series or whatever, as the Garrett chargers are on the Garrett site. It's just really drives me nuts. But on another note, we looked at their line of chargers and they have some G55 stuff. Uh, their new G series chargers were, the turbine wheels were 28% more efficient than the GTXs of the previous generations. So way better turbine technology. Now I looked at a few things when deciding what our power goal really was here. And I knew it's a Coyote, sleeve block, steel rotted still, custom Weissco pistons. We turn it 9,500 RPM, but it's still on a stock crankshaft. And I knew that the stock crankshaft is our limitation. It just starts to deform so much, you start eating up main bearings somewhere in the you know 26 to 3,000 horsepower area depending on how aggressive you are on ignition timing and that kind of stuff. Um, so 3000 was really my mark and they had this charger. Now it is big. When I say it's big, I mean it's the it's a G57 frame. So in Garrett world they have the different chassis and the G57 is the largest option available for the automotive aftermarket. And that really sold me on what I wanted. Now what a lot of people would say is yeah that's 3,000 horsepower turbocharger, but you're only putting a 5 liter or 302 cubic inch engine behind it. Turbocharger is way too big for the engine. How are you ever going to make that work? And my approach is much different than that. Because there's always different ways to do that. A lot of people will look at like the engine displacement, the engine makes X amount of horsepower. And really, in my eyes, the displacement is kind of irrelevant. The turbocharger doesn't know how big the engine is. The turbocharger knows how much airflow the engine's moving, right? So we need an engine that's going to produce enough airflow to get the turbocharger moving because in a turbocharged engine, the turbocharger is our primary air pump here. The engine is really a secondary thing. Its job is really to move enough air to get the turbocharger to stay in a happy operating range and not blow up. That's really its two main criteria is here, right? So if we've got enough turbocharger to support the horsepower, thus the 3000 goal, you get a turbocharger that supports 3000 horsepower. Even if you're thinking, well, it's gonna be hard to get the thing to spool how we want, you can fix that later. Like all you need to spool a turbocharger if it's laggy, turn the engine more RPM, spray it with some nitrous, work on some launch control and I like strategies. That's gonna put more exhaust energy in the thing at a lower RPM to get it on the trans brake. I mean, this is, this is normal, normal stuff here, right? It's not, not new. Now, there are some limitations to that, meaning if you're in, say, a class that doesn't allow you to run nitrous to spool the charger, uh, but even then, you can always build the engine to turn more RPM. And I think people think inside this box all the time, that's like, well, if I've got a two liter engine that turns 7,500 or 8,000 RPM, it's never gonna work with this, you know, 88 millimeter charger or what have you, the charger that, that would be too laggy for that application. And often that's true. So instead they go to a smaller turbocharger that doesn't meet their power goals. Instead of building the engine to turn say 11,000 or 12,000 RPMs to meet the power goals that they want to make. And that's really always been my approach. We have a set of goals in mind specifically in what we're doing, meaning half mile stuff um, or drag race stuff. I'm going to get a turbocharger that's going to support the power we have and we're going to make the thing spool however we need to. That's what we did here. We knew we wanted a 3000 horsepower setup. We knew Garrett offered that. 
we want with their G57 because that was the only charger, that chassis was the only one they support at a 3,000 horsepower deal because the turbine wheel is a bit large enough to support the exhaust flow needed to make that 3,000 horsepower number. Now you have a G55 series 106 mil compressor car or setup charger, um, but the turbine side isn't doesn't flow enough to support 3,000 horsepower. Um, so with all that said, it took some work to get the thing to spool on the trans brake. It's, it's a little lazy, no doubt. The car doesn't have spray on it. We could go to a looser converter. There's things we could do to address that. But for our application, it is a half mile car. And we can't really use hardly any horsepower until about 100 mile an hour. Um, so we really don't need the charger to come on fast. Now if it was a drag car, we would have some more struggles. We would have to get a looser to converter. So where I'm instead of leaving at 4,800 RPM, I'm going to leave on the trans brake, I'm going to be at 5,800 RPM. We're going to have to change something to get the mass flow up to get the turbocharger happy so it achieves our target goal in the time we need from trans brake release. Again, in a drag car scenario. Um, so we would have to, or just spray, spray it with nitrous, which is what most of our import cars that we work on do is we're going to spray the thing right out of the hole, get it to a target RPM and a target boost level on the hit. Sometimes we'll even spray off the brake to a certain distance or a certain mile an hour, however you want to do that, um, just to get it from our launch boost level to our target boost level in the 60 foot. Uh, so lots of ways to skin the cat there, but don't ever approach turbocharger selection as, well, I want to make X and it won't work. You can make it work. It's just how much effort are you willing to put in to get there and be realistic. You're not going to make a 3000 horsepower two liter four cylinder engine or two liter engine in general. That's only going to turn 8,000 RPM, right? You're probably not going to make a 3000 horsepower four cylinder engine period. Nobody's ever made that much. Not that I am aware. <laughs> now I know that there's some guys that are, that are trying with a compound turbocharged billet block SR20 to make that mark. And they're going to get there. I have confidence in them. And that's a compound turbocharger setup. The primary chargers, they, again, they don't care how big the engine is. They care about mass flow. So there's a bunch of ways to skin the cat here. Just don't be afraid to pick the charger to meet your power goals. You just got to be aware that you're going to have to put in all the work to make the system work together. And sometimes that's extensive. So you got to kind of kind of keep within your means there. But you can make it happen. <laughs> like we, We've done that. There's a lot of people that said... I can't believe you're putting a G57 chassis charger on a five liter. That's never going to work. You know, you've got to make X amount of horsepower to even get that thing to light off. And that approach is never going to win you races. Like you just, it just isn't. You, you've got to not be afraid of that, afraid of that challenge. You got to figure it out, get the charger, figure the thing out. And there's some situations where that isn't always an easy thing. Like if you're racing up Pikes Peak, for example, on your crazy elevation, or even you just live in Colorado Springs or any place that has a high elevation level, you've got to think about things a little bit differently for sure, but you're still going to have the same thing in the end. You're still going to have to just sort it out to make it work, whether that's nitrous or analog or a larger rev range in the engine. However you're going to do that, it will happen. You've just got to put in the work. Um, but this thing, this Garrett Charger, has been phenomenal. We've logged about 2,800 horsepower worth of fuel flow on accident. We had a bit of a boost control mishap, and we made 52 pounds, somewhere between 50 and 52 pounds um, on the thing. And that was in that 2,800 horsepower worth of, worth of fuel flow at that point. Um, so it's plenty capable. We're able to spool it from zero to our launch boost at the half mile is only four pounds, very low number. Um, in like 2.8 seconds, I've got it to make eight pounds at 4,300 RPM in four seconds. I haven't tried to really do it any faster than that. Again, if we were gonna take it to the drag strip, it would take some effort there. Um, maybe some combination changes, like I said. But that is part of the process here, right? Uh, so anyway, you guys think I'm wrong in that approach? Like pick the charger based on the power goals and then do the work required to meet the charger's requirements to make that power, right? You've got to get the engine to make the right amount of airflow. You think way outside the box here, right? Like you say, say you take, instead of a five liter engine like this wake we have that turns 9,000 RPM, say you build a two and a half liter engine that turns 16,000 RPM, right? The airflow there, it's gonna be different, right? You're gonna have a lot of different stuff going on. But in theory, just basic numbers, it would work. Now a 16,000 RPM, two and a half liter engine is gonna be a really difficult challenge and that's really where you have to focus your efforts at. But anyway, we've been more than happy with this thing. I'm 
we haven't really shown what the car or what the current configuration is is able to do. If you haven't seen our last video, I go over that a little bit. We've got some oiling system problems to address. Again, back to doing the work to keep the system happy, right? That is just part of the process. And we were sucking the pan dry. So we had what was going to be a mid 220 mile an hour run in the ballpark and hit an oil pressure safety and shut off and coasted it to 11, which is unfortunate. But the car will achieve our goals and we wouldn't be able to do that without this G57 3000 charger. Um, it's been just, just a great piece.